Hello and welcome to more Mengu Cube. Um, what do we got in this pack? Probably just a fraction identity. This card's absurd. It's like treachery, but it steals planeswalkers and signets and artifacts, and it's just a really, really good card. So I like that. If I wasn't taking fractured identity, I could see taking Talisman of Dominance, maybe. I think it's a pretty good like stay open thing. The one thing I've noticed from my previous draft is that fixing and signets appear to be in abundance. So my normal mentality when drafting the MTGO Vintage Cube where there isn't much fixing doesn't really apply because I think you can take bomby cards first and then get fixing later. Potentially. I mean, that's, you know, I'm figuring it out as I go, but like it might not be necessary to take an is it signet here. I mean, I still might, but I'm just saying like you could just maybe take like a compulsive research and go from there. But let's see. Yeah, it's so hard because I'm so used to just like really, really taking lands highly. Um... Yeah, I mean, research, just make sure you have gas always. Um, I do like Ephemerate. I think this is a very powerful enabler as well. Um, if you have this, let's see, Ephemerate, Zealous Conscripts is pretty nice. Eternal Witness. I don't know if Archaeomancer is in here, um, but that's also a good enabler. I'm going to take research, though. I think it's just splashable. It's good in so many decks, and in, particularly in decks with a lot of Signets. Um, I could see this card being very, very solid because... You can flood out when your deck's full of mana. So just being able to mitigate that is nice. Here we have Jace Prince Prodigy and Lightning Bolt for the two options. I think given what I have currently, I'm just going to pick up a Jace. This card is just so good with so many things. Um, I do love Rashad and Port. Geist, not so much. Blade Splicer is good if we do get Ephemerate. Port is a lot worse in this particular cube just because there's like twice as many Signets. So you're not really going to be... Locking them off mana, although if you pour it on turn two, it's good. But I think we're just going to pick up a Blade Splicer and see if we can maybe wheel the Ephemerate. I don't know how likely it is, but it would be nice. Here is Elspeth Conquers Death. In this particular cube, I think it's pretty nice. There's also Commit Memory, though. Because, like, white cards are likely to come around. Or, I guess, more likely. And this is less likely. It's a decent card. This is almost certainly not a Luris deck. Sacred Foundry is also interesting if I want to, like... Splash a lightning bolt. Actually, you know what? I will take Sacred Foundry. There's a lot of good options here. We have Ponder, Thalia. Thalia is probably really good in this format, huh? But it's also going to be good against me. That's the problem. I, I want to play the decks that Thalia is good against. Because they're just more fun. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not drafting Mengeku to draft white. I've drafted white enough. So I think we just take Ponder or Chandra. I'm just going to take Ponder. The very highly sought after card. Ooh, Volcanic Island is good. This is green black. Um, Palace Jailer is also very, very solid, right? You just like eat a creature and draw cards for the rest of the game. You know what? Let's just pick up Palace Jailer. Kind of cement ourselves into this nice blue white style deck. And Thalia might come around. I don't think too many people will be in white. It's kind of late in the pack, so it'd have to be like second to last pick or something. But if everyone's trying to force blue, we end up with Thalia. That'd be pretty nice. Here we have Lotus Petal, Searing Spear, Imperial Recruiter, Maul of the Skyclaves. I do like Maul of the Skyclaves. Not so much in this deck, though. In fact, probably not so much in this cube, but it's a good card in general. Lotus Petal is fine. I don't love or hate it. And then Searing Spear... It's funny, so I was reading the write-up that Manguchi made for this cube, and in it he explicitly mentions he doesn't like Burst Lightning as a card, but then he put Searing Spear in there, which I think is just a worse card. <laughs> So I don't know that one. That one was funny to me. I'm going to take the Spyglass. Glacial Fortress, kind of exactly what we want. Drawn from Dreams, I think it's just too slow. And then there's some other cards, but Blue-White Fixing is perfect. We do get Ephemerate. There's also Arid Mesa and Disenchant. So right now we have Ephemerate, Blade Splicer, Palace Jailer. It's got to be good in this deck. I'll see what else we can get, but Ephemerate's really nice. We do Wheel Lightning Bolt and Bone Crusher Giant. I think Bolt is better. Okay, so... Red White is open. Season Hollow Blade helps us be aggressive. Otherwise, Rishidan Port is just good tempo. I'm going to take the Port, I think. And I mean, it's possible we end up with a Luris deck. It's unlikely, but possible. Here we can take Binding Old Gods, which I won't be playing. Man, last pick of all Ritual. So someone did take Thalia, but it could have been like a hate draft. Luris, you have Lifelink? Honestly, didn't. There's a baby Luris! Aww. I'm just like, I'm spending more time looking at the art, and the more I look at art, the happier I get with this game. There's just, there's a tiny little one. That's so cute. Um, alright, Spellseeker can grab Ephemerate, and then you can Ephemerate Spellseeker, so that's definitely something. Mother of Runes is something that we would like. 
it does have a relatively decent chance of coming around because it's not really guaranteed that someone will be in white. So I think we're going to try and get Spellseeker and then either Mother of Runes or Plateau on the wheel. Because if we take Mother of Runes, there's like no chance Spellseeker comes around. And Spellseeker for Ephemerate is a very, very nice play. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Mana Tithe, I love. Vendillion Click, pretty good with Ephemerate. Hollowed Fountain, I think this is necessary. I know I said I wasn't taking Fixing, but there's like a million good cards in that pack. So I'm going to get something that I like. But like the odds of someone taking a Hollowed Fountain are pretty high. At least in my mind, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I want to take Electrolyze. I maybe don't even play this Lightning Bolt. If I can go straight blue-white, that would be ideal. Thieving Scott Ever is actually particularly good in this version of the cube just because of all the signets. So I like that. I like Avacyn, Oblivion Ring, and Champion. But I think, right, for now, this is the highest pick. Ooh, Smuggler's Copter. Restoration Angel. I have six creatures. I think this is a Copter deck. Who am I kidding? Every deck is a Copter deck. Resto might come around. We'll see. This is a pretty bad pack overall. I'm really, really low on Ravages and Armageddon. I think Ravages has the cooler artwork, so I will take it. But I don't love it, especially in a cube with so many Signets. Like, you blow up all their lands. If they have, like, a Signet, then they just play land. They go up to two mana. And they're not that far behind anymore. So there's a chance I don't even end up playing this card. But if I need playables or whatever, it, it might come in. Ooh, okay. We have Chromebox, Ancient Tomb, Mana Confluence, and Leonin Relic Order. I would love to have all of these. This is actually looking like a pretty decent Ancient Tomb deck with Smuggler's Copter, Spyglass, Spellseeker, Research Blade, Splicer, Palace Jailer. So I think I do take that. And Relic Order might actually make it around the table. Not the best combo with Ancient Tomb, but it's still decent. Here we could take a Porcelain Legionnaire. Seagate Stormcaller. Angel of Sanctions is also pretty good. But I think I want to avoid fives and just take Porcelain. Missing out on Big Thalia kind of hurts. We can get Little, little Thalia. I think she's actually fine. There's a lot of non-basic lands in this cube. And we do get Mother Runes on the wheel, which is nice. Yeah, Mana Tithe. It hurts because of Johnny Vengeance on the same pack, but Mana Tithe is just... It's so good. People think I'm memeing when I talk about it, but I legitimately think Mana Tithe is probably better than Counterspell. Like... It's just easier to cast. You can counter something on turn two, which is really important for setting your opponent back. Like, having Mana Tithe up turn one is so insane. And then, oh, hang on. Uh, Oblivion Ring, Avacyn. I don't have much removal. I'll take O-Ring. I do have Ephemerate Avacyn, though, so I'm taking Avacyn. I don't know about that pick. Here we can take Hostess Taker. Really good with Ephemerate. Turnabout. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Mana Tithe. Because, yeah, you can hold it up turn one and counter their two drop, which is really, like, where you start to fall behind. So... Mana tithing a two drop into holding up like remand is such a strong play because it's unlikely your opponent really gets to add to the board before you have counter magic available. And then in particular, that's when mana tithes at its worst. At its best is when you're like mana tithing a five drop on turn five because you're spending one mana. Ooh, we did actually get the relic order. Nice. You're spending one mana to counter five and you're just like getting so far ahead in tempo. It's really, really hard for your opponent to like see that you have it because it's not easily telegraphed because it's only one mana it's just it's the perfect card um here let's see i'm, I'm probably not playing red so we could just go strict blue white um there's a Zorius signet if i want help with that conclave tribunal and student of warfare are likely to come around i think i'm gonna take the tribunal and hope that student of warfare makes it around tribunal is a pretty nice card especially with this many creatures Ooh, caracas lutri is kind of dumb because it like it's just free. I, I was originally high on it, and then I realized how kind of boring it is that it just always works. So I don't love it. It's also not great in this deck because it only copies spells you control. Um, and this deck really needs like swords to plowshares. We're gonna take Caracas though. Just a good card. Ooh, there's also four spike in this cube. Whoa. Do I just play both? I kind of want to just play both. We're playing both. I love Council Judgment, but it's a little bit expensive. Ooh, baby to fairy. And then maybe we can wheel Illuminarch, Aspirant, City of Brass, or Phyrexian Revoker. All sounds good to me. I don't know if I love this Ephemerate. Let's count what it's good with. Leonin Relic Order. You can play it and then Ephemerate, and then it works. It's good with Blade Splicer, Spell Seeker, Palace Jailer. If we do end up playing Hostage Taker, I guess it's good there. Elspeth, Jataxian Probe. Sheevan Reef, but I, I think it's better not to go that route. I'm just going to take the Elspeth. 
She's good top end. Yeah, I'm probably not playing this ephemery. Maybe not even Spellseeker. I think our deck is getting more streamlined as we go. Which makes me slightly regret this Archangel Avacyn pickup, but it is what it is. I think this plus Caracas is a pretty nice combo. Ooh, Soul Herder. I love that in Vintage Cube. Whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, put a counter on it, and this only exiles creatures you control. Just a 1-1. One, one. I mean, that is nice. Otherwise, it's Looter El Core, I think, would be the pick. I do actually think Looter is pretty good, too. Soul Herder Blade Splicer is really sick. Soul Herder Palace Jailer just like... All right, I'm down. Ooh, Deputy of Detention. A lot of good cards here. Um, Deputy eating their stuff seems like a really good tempo play, and probably... Well, there's going to be one pick left. It's going to be Rune Scar Demon, maybe. This, this is a rough pack to not get any wheels from, because like all of these would be nice. Especially Archon of Ameria. Maybe I just want Archon. It's a 2-3 flyer that like stops them from doing a bunch of stuff. Especially if they... Well, it makes my Mana Tithe and Force Spike worse. I'm going to take Deputy. Okay, we get Gideon. Gideon's nice. We do have a lot of 3-drops in this deck now. But we do get Student, as I expected. So... Yeah, this curve is a bit weird. Maybe I cut Compulsive Research. Somehow I ended up almost mono white against my better attempts. I don't think... I mean, Ephemerate protects me from removal, I guess. But let's see what happens if I cut all of these. 27 total. We do get Usher of the Fallen. That's nice. I actually think this card's great. So right now this is 23 with 23 spells. Yeah, so that, actually this, this deck looks pretty good as it is. It has almost everything. We have some decent fixing, an Ancient Tomb help me with some of these threes it's not the best card and i have no power but honestly you don't really need power when you have like fractionate in the palace jailer things like that sorcerer spyglass this can stop mana abilities no uh, the fact that that cannot stop mana abilities makes me want to replace it they can cut off planeswalkers but the whole point is like that's why fraction revoker is good oh there's console judgment okay perfect go out here spyglass this is also a pretty bad Jace Vryn's Prodigy deck, actually. I don't have too many spells to go alongside him. But flashing back, Council Judgment or Fractured Identity are quite good. We do get Luminarch Aspirant, so I could even cut Jace at this point. Well, I made fun of drafting Mono White, but what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I was going into Blue White, and Blue got cut really hard. We get a Brimaz. I actually like Brimaz. So I'm going to say Conclave Tribunal costs like three. Doesn't help my curve any. I could cut Archangel Avacyn to keep Brimaz in the deck. Because this is 23 playables right now. Nowhere near being a Luris deck. My curve is way too high for that. I could keep Compulsive Research in the deck. And then also play Jace Vryn's Prodigy. But then, hmm. Is this a May? It is a May. So it's only good with Palace Jailer and Blade Splicer. But it is like really, really good with them might bring it in against uh, it's like yeah it's so situational and i think these cards are good enough on their own that i'm just gonna keep it as is i could run 18 land because i have so many three drops 17 is probably fine i guess at that point i'll just bring in amazon instead of soul herder right this is effectively a three mana it's going to attack as a two two all right i'm sold i like amazon because of the flying and three nine so 17 lands, blue sources, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for a couple blue cards. And then white sources, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think I can actually cut a planes for an island. 12 white sources is plenty, although it is a lot of double white. Actually, yeah, let's, let's keep the planes in there. We'll just run it like this. See you guys, round one. Man, I was just watching a video of people doing motion capture on cats. It's crazy. Also adorable. Anyway, we're playing against Nylas. Uh, we're gonna go first. This hand is good. We have turn one Ancient Tomb into Porcelain Legionnaire. Turn two Force Spike or Thieving Skydiver. That seems good. Good luck, have fun, love the content. Thank you. Good luck, have fun to you as well. Everyone's so nice at Magic Online. Not everybody, but most people. And we're on the play. We're about to take a whole bunch of damage, but it's fine. Turn one, three one, on the play. Show me what you got. Can't even fatal push my porcelain legionnaire. So take that. <laughs> Ooh, I kind of like Imperial Seal. So we're definitely going to Hollow Found paying the life to hold up Force Spike. That actually makes my clock one turn faster because this, hits, this kills them in six turns. Or seven turns normally, but now it's six because uh, 
18 plus 3 is 21. Ooh, I don't even have to pay the life now. I could just attack for 3 and they'll never know. If they play a Signet, I will just eat it. Om nom nom, Thieving Skydiver. Because if their best play la this turn was 2 mana, Careful Study is fine. I will force Spike a reanimate though, that'd be pretty sick. I also have Caracas, so no matter what happens, we'll be in an okay position. Yoink. <laughs> Got him. Opponent <laughs> give me the frowny face. I'm telling you, these cards are insane. It's like, it's really, really good. Ooh, Leon and Relic Order. So, let's attack for three. And because I have Leon and Relic Order, I don't really mind just casting out a Thieving Skydiver without kicking anything. We could just hold up Caracas and take him down. They do nothing. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, attack them for five. So I can play Leon and Relic Warder, but then I'm not holding up Caracas. I think I'm just gonna play Hollowed Fountain Tapped. I'm really not in too much rush. I have Fractured Identity and like and Caracas against the reanimation opponent. Who's at seven, so Gristlebrand doesn't even work. This seems fine. They're just getting info. They see the bad news. Okay, took him down. Sorry, opponent. I know you're a fan, but look, the four spikes had to happen. Okay, so they're playing Reanimate. This feels like a decent Ravages of War matchup, actually. Although they could always just top deck, like, let me think about this. They could always just top deck, like, Swamp Reanimate after I've cast Ravages of War. So it's not even so much of a hard lock. And I already have Caracas, so I don't really want Ravages. Honestly, I feel like my deck is pretty good. Because they're playing Reanimator, I do kind of like the idea of Soul Herder Palace Jailer. But Brimaz just kills them so quickly. Yeah, we're just fine. This deck is too... Oh, I could get rid of Archangel Avacyn for Soul Herder, actually. Maybe I like that. Just because this costs 5 and I'm on the draw, I don't want too many 5 drops. We'll try that. Oh, <laughs> look at this hand. Definitely going to keep this. I don't love that I have to shock with Howl Fountain, but it also puts the, the fear in them, you know? Sometimes the moral victory is more important. And they've mulliganed, so they can't even really afford to play around the... Oh no, do they have turn 2 reanimate? They might, as long as it's just shielded, that's okay? No. Yeah, as long as it's just shielded, that's fine. Play this untapped. Because I do have Deputy of Detention. As long as they don't have shielded plus more discard. Aha! <laughs> Soul Herder, okay, let's go planes, past turns. So they're probably playing around 4 spike on animate dead, maybe? Exhume makes sense, so that's fine. I sacrifice a creature. So I can play Elspeth here. There's a couple things I can do, because basically I'm like in a bad shape to a removal spell. So I can play Elspeth. Swamp Walk doesn't get through this. So I could play Elspeth and block. If they have a removal spell and kill my Elspeth's token, then they can kill Elspeth, but then I can get to keep Deputy of Detention. So I think I actually do go for Elspeth here. Also, I lose to a counter like four spike on my own deputy. But notice how me four spiking them last turn gave me an entire turn against Shieldred this this game. So like you could do some mind games where you side out four spike and stuff. Honestly, though, uh, Shieldred doesn't scare me too much. Ooh, okay, that could be good, could be bad. Well, <laughs> I have like the same hand, but also Caracas now, so. <laughs> I'm not too mad about that one. We'll take it. We block. In fact, I don't think they should have attacked because I, their dude is now tapped. So let's make a soldier. Play Caracas. Bounce Shieldred. Play Thalia. Hold up Force Spike. Seems good. The old Reanimator Time Twister is an interesting gambit. So we're going to steal their Talisman. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. This poor opponent. <laughs> oh, having way too much fun. All right. So now, oh my gosh, we have Teferi. This is just so dirty. Uh, I guess I don't even really need to steal their talisman. We can, hmm. No, I guess I can, right? I can go Thieving Skydiver. No, because I can't play Kicker and have Rishid in port. So let's just Relic Warder. Eat that. And we wish it and port them on upkeep. Elspeth is going to get flying and hit them for six. For seven. Okay, seems good. Wish it and port their black mana. We take damage, but it doesn't really matter. 
opponent sees the good news. <laughs> so good. Although I am overloaded on blue mana. So now go land into Teferi before we do anything. Because this tells us like whether or not they have spells to cast. They don't do anything. So they're pretty much just dead. Elspeth is going to give you flying. We fold a four. We uptick Teferi. We rish it and port them on upkeep. Holding up Caracas. And even if they play like a Grave Titan here, Thalia means it enters tapped. So it just doesn't even work. Ooh, Time Spiral. Okay. Fair enough. What do you got for me, opponent? You're at four life. Shallow Grave doesn't work because Thalia means their creature enters tapped. Ooh, whole breacher into Time Twister? Uh-oh. Wow. Okay, they draw seven. I can't bounce it or anything. That's okay. You know what? I was joking, but they have a very good shot here. They have seven mana now. This is a very real chance from the opponent. What? Okay. Um. Fair enough. That is a really... Wow. Massacre Worm it is. Um, so I can't have any creatures in play now. They get their tell. I might actually lose this. That's insane. Though, I mean, they, they top decked really well, but the fact that they're in this is highly impressive. Okay. Student of Warfare definitely helps. Can I Teferi? I think if I Teferi Whole Breacher, I do still get to draw the card. Hmm. I can Elspeth make a chump blocker. Because I really want to keep Elspeth to activate her flying ability. I think I do want to to ferry the whole breacher here. I think I get to draw the card. Why is this? I must be lagging. Ah, okay, we made it back. Uh, what is happening over here? I have no card arts. We lagged out. I have four games. All right, let's bounce whole breacher. See what happens there. Okay, that was very, very strange. I don't know what happened. My internet just crashed. This is why I don't stream, at least at this house. We do get to draw a card, and we uptick Elspeth. We play planes. Do I want to go to four? Student of Warfare, level up, level up. Thalia, go Student of Warfare. I don't know if I need to level up, to be honest. I guess a 3-3 means it can survive the Massacre Worm bounce, and then I just don't rish it import them. Okay, I'm fine with that, actually. Yeah, all right. And then we don't rush it in port, we hold up Caracas on Thalia to block Massacre Worm and then bounce, most likely. I mean, they could like hard cast Shieldred or something, but as long as a single creature survives, Elspeth uptick can give them flying and win. Oh no, they have a thing. Oh, but they can't cast it because to fairy. Ha <laughs> ha! Got him. I think they had Vampiric Tutor. I don't love this. Okay, Chupacabra hits me for two, but if they reanimate. If they exhume Chupacabra, I do get my Loon and Relic Order back. <laughs> Alright, um... So they can Recurring Nightmare Chupacabra, Recurring Nightmare Massacre Worm. So leveling up student to a 3-3 was important. They get Chupacabra. Okay. Yep, that was the correct target. Yikes, we're in trouble. That comes back, that puts us down to 2 life. Bounce Thalia to hand. We do know that they have Hole Breacher as well, but they can't cast it on my turn because I have Teferi. I lose one life. Or two life, I mean. Alright, we're in trouble. Then they cast Hole Breacher. Yeah. I think I'm actually losing this game. <laughs> this is where Mana Tithe is not as good. Right, because I play Thalia, I think we actually just move on to the next game. Because they could just loop Massacre Worm Recurring Nightmare with Elspeth tokens. Well played, opponent. Okay, Sorcerer's Spyglass can name Recurring Nightmare. That only matters so much if they get up to like a million mana. I think I like Ravages of War on the play more than Soul Herder. Because that, I mean, that just stops all the nonsense dead in their tracks. We'll just run it like that. Alright, let's go first. My opponent sided up to 43 cards. So, I'm feeling a bit more confident. Uh, this hand, I have 13 white sources. I have Force Spike and Rishid in port. Conclave Tribunal. This hand is... Fine, but not amazing. I don't know. I think I can do better. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan. This hand is better. We just put back a planes. I can't believe the opponent won that. I think they literally went Time Twister into Time Spiral, into Whole Breacher Time Twister, into Massacre Worm. We're gonna keep this, put back a planes. Done. 
And we're going to play around Wasteland because we are good at the game. And also there's really like leading with planes versus Glacial Fortress is roughly the same. This makes them scared of Mana Tithe, whereas Glacial Fortress doesn't. So I think it's just better to play Glacial Fortress. Man, they've had turn one in Tomb... Or I think they've had like turn two reanimate almost every game or every single game. Yeah, every single game they've had turn two reanimate. They have Iona. Oh no. Please not like this. Manatide. Fracture any planes island. Let's shuffle. Okay, the copter kind of helps. If they turn to Iona, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Alright. Uh, GG's. They didn't even mulligan for this. That's an unfortunate end to well, it was a pretty good series, but turn two reanimate every single game does win you games. They name white, and I don't have any non-white answers to Iona. I don't think. Like, yeah, it's not worth playing it out. I don't have any answers to that. See you guys next round. Man, I just realized I have Caracas for Iona. Ah, oh, that's a disappointing concede. I mean, I had like two turns to hit it, but I did have that as a possible out. Good luck, have fun to you as well. That's why you never concede early. I was trying to save the viewers some time. And I just... Ooh, this hand's good. I'll keep this. Turn 1, Tapped Hollowed Fountain. Turn 2, Luminarch Aspirant. Turn 3, Brimaz. This is Vintage Cube, but we're playing, like, standard. <laughs> One in... Looks like they may be mulligan, but I guess not. I'm not going to bluff the Mana Tithe until my opponent has seen it. Uh-oh. Are they going to kill my Aspirant? I don't like that. Well, what up? Cool. No bolt. It's because Minguchi got rid of Burst Lightning. I'm never going to live that, like, let that go away. Robber the Rich, reach haste. Whenever deals combat damage, if they have more cards than you, that's fine. We'll just take the hit. Um, but yeah, I'm never going to let him live that down of like... <laughs> Our team doesn't like playing bad cards like Burst Lightning. That's why we added Searing Spear. So this is going to level up. I can play Gideon Blackblade, but that doesn't give me blockers for Robber of the Rich. So I think I'm just going to get down Brimaz and then put a counter on Brimaz because 5 toughness is so hard for like mono red to deal with if that is what they're playing. And then next turn I can play Gideon, give Brimaz lifelink and it's pretty much done from there. Legion war boss. Ooh, I even get to make tokens. Nice. I guess they trade for the token, but whatever, we'll block. Yep, so that does 4. So we're going to do this. Hold up Hallowed Fountain. Give lifelink to Brimaz. Let's... I kind of want to just go all in on Brimaz. But I guess making this into a 3-3 makes it better on defense. We lose our 1-1. One, one, that's fine. But we gain life. Ooh. Okay. Fleet Root Wheel Cruiser to take down Gideon is spicy. That's a fun inclusion. I guess I was supposed to make Brimaz a 5-6. Although, honestly, losing Gideon here is not that bad. I could also actually block with Luminarch Aspirant. That's an interesting one. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to do that. I don't need any more. This card's insane, by the way. Attack, Gideon, Gideon. Yeah, so we're just going to block like this and this. Keep Gideon around. I, I just like, the lifelink seems so hard for the opponent to get through. Also, I don't know if you heard that door slam. Every once in a while, I have all the windows in my house open, and there's like a weird crosswind that just really closes the door hard. So, if you heard a weird background sound, that's what it was. Ooh, that's good. So, Gideon's going to give you lifelink. We attack them for all of this. And as weird as it sounds, I might just be feeling the Student of Warfare double level instead of a Blade Splicer, because the 3-3 three, three first strike really gets through almost everything they could have yeah okay also i must be really hungry because i read that as like donut glazer for a second <laughs> instead of whatever that is so i don't i don't know what's going on there um playing against red is village bell ringer good is that crazy that's probably crazy i think we just get rid of maybe ancient tomb for a blue source here like, Tomb is good, but I have a lot of, like, double whites. In fact, I can get rid of Ancient Tomb for a white source, actually. And I don't know if I love Thieving Skydiver. Like, Lurus has lifelink, so it's probably worth just bringing in. Although, I guess I can repeat cast Skydiver with Lurus, so <laughs> that's something. And then I, 
I could get rid of Fractured Identity. It's a good top end card though. No, oh, bring in Lurus, cut Skydiver, run it like that. Oh, yeah, this hand's good. Turn one mom, if unanswered, is just backbreaking. They're playing red, so it's unlikely, but they didn't have any burn last game. They could be playing blue red and just didn't hit their blue the whole game, which is also like a possibility, which seems more likely given that they play fetch lands. Oh, black red. Are they going to thought seize my mom? Ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, this could not have gone better. They just insta scoop to this. Duress seems like a very strange card to have against me post sideboard because they just saw a bunch of creatures. Like, I would say that's unlucky, but I don't have that many non-creature spells in my deck. So like, what's the upshot? I guess they hit my four drop, but they're playing an aggressive deck. Okay, never mind, they have Mox. We could be in trouble. I can yoink their Mox. I can also yoink the Eidolon. Take damage. I think I want to steal the Eidolon, actually. Keep Mother of Runes active, because like, that's like the only way I lose is getting burned out. Also, can we just all agree that Leon and Relic Order is a very good magic card? Fleet Real Cruiser, so that gets bigger. I take five, I mean, that's not nothing. I'm also drawing Mono Land, but we have Blade Splicer, which can now block the Fleet Wheel Cruiser. I can start hitting my opponent for two. Like, this is pretty fine. Hopefully they don't realize the first strike, and then they play something and crew the cruiser and attack, and then just get them with the golem first strike. Yes. What is the crew? Crew two. Yeah, are they going to crew? No, they figured it out. Ooh, Fractured Identity is nice. Um, Given that, I think I will Deputy of Detention the... I suppose the Fleet Wheel Cruiser is the scariest card they have. They only have one card in hand, so I can just Fractured Identity whatever sick answer they come up with. Because they cannot block with Zergo. If I exile Zergo, then they crew the Fleet Wheel and I don't get an attack in this turn. But now I can attack them for five. I think the worst thing that could possibly happen to me here is Mizio Mortar's Overload. That would be pretty bad, but you always have to plan for the worst. If only I had Mana Tithe, then that wouldn't be possible. Ooh, Rampaging Frostodon. Okay. I will steal that for my own use. I mean, we drew a bunch of lands, but it doesn't matter. Our deck is just disgustingly good. All right. Took that one down. See you guys next round. All right. We're playing against Futile Effort. That's uh, an unfortunate situation. And, uh, well, I guess this hand would be a Futile Effort to keep. Wow. All right. If we could even out these two hands, that would be great. I think... I'm on the play. I think I actually do keep this hand on the play. Because it's just like, I would keep this three lander on five. Like, this hand is fine. Um, because I have enough mana, I just need to, draw, need to draw spells. And depending on what my opponent's playing, it's possible this is just good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Because I, I have the mana to cast every spell in my deck, basically. Chase Vryn's Prodigy. So, okay, drawing Hollowed Fawn was not ideal. Um... I think we're gonna get down. Could they be playing Reanimator? Maybe. I'm gonna get down Thalia this turn to limit their mana options, and then next turn, if I want to, I can go. Whoa, that was a weird throat. <laughs> Sometimes your throat makes weird sounds, man. Uh, I'm gonna Deputy of Detention or Conclave Tribunal the Jace, depending on what they hit. I don't know if I can take another turn to reanimate, but fortunately that was not the case. This opponent appears to be flooding a bit. The other reason for playing Thalia here is that she just. Um, does damage. Gideon Blackblade. So let's attack first and see what happens. They can't ambush her with a creature because uh, they, it would enter tapped. And she has first strikes. So I don't know of any creature that would kill her here. And I kind of just want to play Gideon. Playing around four spike. Probably should have done something with uh, Vigilance. But I was a little scared of what they could possibly have. And the sick thing I can do now is like... Gideon, give Vigilance, then Conclave Tribunal or something. Ooh, Tropical Island, okay. Is this like a Leovold Time Twister deck? Probably is, that's what most of these decks are. Very confused what's going on over there, though. I love Smuggler's Copter. So, Gideon's going to give Thalia Vigilance, I think. And let's attack for seven. Then I can go play this untapped. We can... A smuggler's Copter? Or I can go Deputy of Detention Conclave Tribunal, but I think Smuggler's Copter means I have lethal next turn. So I want to play Smuggler's Copter, 
playing around mana leak actually, and then deputy of detention, because this is this is lethal damage. I guess as long as deputy of detention survives. So maybe this wasn't the best sequencing, but if I draw any creature, then it is lethal. Okay. So if they don't cast anything here, they're in trouble. I'm imagining factor fiction, gifts ungiven, thirst for knowledge. Like they have to have something. Repeal. Oh, do they have shallow grave? Is that what I'm dealing with here? I hope not. Yeah, my biggest problem with reanimator is like in a cube environment, there's just not too much to interact with it. Um, okay, that's a bit rough, but honestly not the end of the world. My opponent takes seven here. They do have six cards in hand though. Facial Fortress, we can discard. So let's crew here. I guess we give this lifelink, because why not? Alice Jailer. Um I'm trying to think of ways that I lose this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So through the breach, Emrakul doesn't do it. A board wipe doesn't do it because I have Gideon Smuggler's Copter. I think I'm just going to get down Palace Jailer and draw a card. I don't know. Maybe that was like not the right play and I should save it to kill something they have that's insane. But they would need like through the breach Emrakul plus like a kill spell. And I don't think like I could even like down tick Gideon and then use Gideon to crew the Copter or there's a whole bunch of options here. Okay. I really don't know what their deck was. So, Ravages of War in for Archangel Avacyn. Although I'm on the draw, but their deck seems pretty weak to Ravages of War, so I'll just do that. Oh no, five land hand. I don't have any interaction. I'm going to mulligan. There we go. Hand is better and... Hmm. It's going to be one of the three drops that I ditch. I like Gideon a bit more because he plays around board wipes better. One has pre -retain. We'll see how they scry. I don't think I'm ever like just holding up mana tithe here because I need to get down a creature. One card on bottom, one card on top. Okay, if they top two, then I would consider like holding up mana tithe, but I don't think I'm winning this game by just sitting here with mana tithe available. Like you need to clock your opponent somehow. Oh no. Well, maybe I miss made a mistake. Okay, Necropotence. Definitely holding up mana tithe now. Really glad I have Usher to the Fallen in hand. I can have six. I'm not going to respond to any of this. Ooh, but the copter. Let's attack for two. What is my play here? It's definitely not to boast. Um, honestly, I think I do need to just play Smuggler's Copter in. Or actually, wait a second. Yeah, I got it. This is hard because I can go Student of Warfare and the next turn. Am I scared of what they're doing this turn? Actually, I'm not that scared of this turn. We're going to save Mana Tithe for a future turn. That could be wrong, but... It's <laughs> all right. I chose poorly. Spell pierce. All right. You know what? If you want to counter my non creature stuff, that's fine. They take Gideon. Now they know about mana tithe. They take Gideon. Mana tithe. Now they know about Gideon. Okay. I do like to see Necropotence in a cube. It's a really strong card when it's played properly. Um, I'm a bit worried about Gideon. Champion of Wits. Oh, I guess it gets exiled. Okay. Ancient Tomb actually helps, right? I can... No, it doesn't. I can't play Gideon and Boast because that costs five. Let's attack first and see what happens there, right? Because I could do this at any time. Yeah. Interesting. Would I rather Boast or play Student? I think I'd rather play Student. All right, I can go Holophone, Untapped, Student of Warfare, Usher the Fallen, play around Days with this sequencing. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Five, so not quite lethal for our opponent next turn. We're pretty weak to like Toxic Deluge, so I could have just jammed Gideon there, which honestly maybe would have made more sense. But this turn I can go Gideon plus Boast, or more likely Gideon plus level up Student of Warfare, I guess. That Spell Pierce on the Copter was really brutal. All right, so they drew one card with Necropotence, and they go up to seven. Draw Fractured Identity. Let's level this up once and see what happens there. Play Ancient Tomb. What are we feeling? I can play Gideon. That gives Indestructible. Or I can Boast. I feel like Gideon's probably better. And I can't get like hit by Cryptic Command or anything. Okay. Gideon will give Usher of the Fallen Indestructible. I don't know. Maybe Lifelink was more relevant. 
But this protects from like a uh, pester mite or something. They go to two. Now, sneak attack or shallow grave ember cool doesn't kill me because I'm at one life and I just swing back with Gideon. Uh, toxic deluge doesn't kill Gideon. Shieldred doesn't work because I have two attackers and fracture identity. I guess most I don't know of anything that works. Gristlebrand doesn't because they're at two life. Tinker for blight steel plus lightning greaves I guess would work, but I haven't seen any artifacts. And then obviously going off with Storm, like if they just go... Well, I guess they can't, right? If a card will be put in your graveyard anywhere? No, whenever you discard only. So they could theoretically like Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Demonic Tutor, Yawgmoss will, I guess. They just couldn't discard it to Lion's Eye Diamond because then it would get exiled. The hope is that this is just like Time Twister or something. Okay, they actually do have Yawgmoss will, but no blue mana now. Wow, are they going to actually do that and then duress my Fractured Identity? What did they just cast? Oh, they cast Gush? Okay, so they are playing Storm. That makes the most sense. I guess duress Fractured Identity doesn't matter because they're just dead if I <laughs> if this goes through. All right, that will do it for the League, I guess. I respect the opponent going for it. This deck was really sick. Round one, or I think I'll probably put it round two in the video, was just my opponent drew. <laughs> it was literally Time Twister into Time Spiral, into Hole Breacher, into Time Twister, into Massacre Worm, Recurring Nightmare, was the sequence of draws that they had. Which, you know, you can't beat that. So I think this deck should have trophied. It, it was insane. I mean, it was a very, very good deck, but a couple bad lucks didn't let us trophy. But the deck was sweet, and I'm not loving this cube. I might do a couple more drafts of it, but I don't know. We'll see. See you guys then.